Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of the Culture Cousins podcast. I'm Tiffany. I'm Serena. And we are two cousins criticizing the culture, and we know you can relate. Um, to get started, this episode, um, I just want to kind of do a little hooray for being on episode 10. You know, we in double digits. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's like a proud moment. Um, not that 10 is like a huge number, but just, I feel like it's, you know, progress, you know, this is something that we do consistently. It's always fun. It's always a good time. And, uh, you know, I just want to, I guess, say something to mark, um, number 10 I I remember like being a kid and like when I hit 10 I felt like it was like something super special because it was double digits like it's like like you're unlocking a new level of life so hopefully the same can apply to the podcast not that I'm you know not content with what we're doing but you know just just looking forward to see what comes and and all that jazz but whatever you want to say you know to add to that if you want to say anything you know I um know. i think it's a good milestone i'm excited about it mm-hmm. i don't know about anybody else i mean even if it's just us watching it you know i think it's a good milestone for both of us mm-hmm. um i think it's like i like that we've been consistent with it mm-hmm. you know and this is just our thing and it's just like nothing else matters kind of thing Mm-hmm. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, it's just like I feel like it's like I when I'm doing this, it's like another part of myself is on is like watching, you know, like the outside look, looking in, almost kind of in a way, like for mm-hmm. myself. Um, so I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, and it just makes me want to keep going, and that's why I always like write, like type up even if I don't have any like notes because like for like this episode I didn't really have that many notes but I just like typing up everything that we we're talking about and then on the same document and so I can go back and look at you know Aww. where we started you know and then like to see like maybe go back for references if, for the future and stuff like that so yeah. I was like, okay let me I said this before let me not contradict later and say something different mm-hmm. um so I just like what we've been doing I'm proud of it awesome that's good um yeah yeah so i guess we'll um kind of have you do the guideline for this episode um i did kind of work on notes but they're kind of like you know all over the place so i'm just kind of like you know just i need leadership (laughs) for this conversation so i'm gonna pass it over to you i know we usually start off with like our check-ins and stuff Mm -hmm. so yeah um yeah, well, we just wanted to start off with, like, a little girl chat, check-in, all that. Um, but lately, like, this week, it's been not, it's not been as great as I have been. I'm still, like, good, but it's just, like, I've been struggling this week. Not necessarily nothing I can really directly pinpoint. Just mm-hmm. a lot of annoying things here and there. Um, and just, like, my overall mental health has been, like, struggling this past week. Um, just, like, my overall, because I deal with, like, a lot of anxiety. Um and I saw this TikTok, I think it was a TikTok or some post, and it was saying how, like, because I was always, like, the good, the good child when I was a kid, and they were saying how, like, the good, the good kids were just kids that were anxious, and we, the good kids noticed, like, we could pick up on when the adults were frustrated, and I was like, yes, that was, like, so accurate, Uh and it's like, I'm still that way now, even, like, in, because some people like as you get older of course you can sense when people are frustrated but some people just don't care that's the difference and like me as a kid you're just like okay I can tell I'm starting to tell that my mom's getting aggravated or my dad's getting upset with me about something or whenever I ask for this someone gets upset or you know they get frustrated and it's just like okay that get, well I think adults don't realize it like that gives people anxiety and like for me that just made me think about like okay maybe I that's gonna that like made me think like watch myself how I interact with my own child um which is like I can see both sides of the coin because being a parent and still having those 
raw feelings from when I was a child, I can still feel like I understand both sides because I can understand kids are annoying. And sometimes it's kind of hard to hide the fact that you're annoyed. <laughs> but at the same time, kids shouldn't have to they shouldn't have to feel all of your like worries. They shouldn't have to feel your anxiety, your frustrations. The kids should not have to feel that because it's not their fault that that's happening. It's not their fault that they want juice and they don't know how to express that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I understand both sides now. So that's something that I've just been doing. Just overall anxiety, like about just little stuff. Like I, I really do anxiety every day. Like it's almost crippling sometimes. Like um and just like overall just like you know dealing with like depression and grief because like people don't realize like sometimes like when you're dealing with grief when you've lost someone like it doesn't just come up like when you look at their picture or or like the moments you think that they would like on how they portray it on tv it may just come when you're just walking down the grocery store or you're eating dinner or it's like okay well this is this is some good macaroni why am i crying you know like that's what people yeah. don't realize um so that's what i've just been doing with just, you know anxiety and depression just hanging out with me all day um but other than that i've been you know good you know as far as like the podcast and you know being inspired i have been struggling like a lot with like tiktok and coming up with content for tiktok um i'm thinking about just not necessarily stop doing my tiktok so i'm just not gonna like i'm trying to like not worry just like because i saw this one tiktok actually this girl saying how like she's not even gonna work she's not worried about money anymore she's not worried about getting if she's gonna have enough money for gas she's just gonna just just live her life and just say the money's gonna come (laughs) and just have faith that the money's gonna come because it's just like what's the point of worrying because like just have faith that the money will come or the new job opportunity will come or and that's just how I'm trying to be now. Like, I'm not going to worry about coming up with new TikTok ideas. I'm just going to hope that they come and hope that I get inspired and I have content that I can put out. Um, and that's all I'm going to do. Because, like, that's just one thing i just been struggling with lately. It's like, hmm, I have not made TikToks in, like, a few days. And I don't want to be the, those kind of people where you're only, you're not posting consistently. Because that's how you get, you know, um, engagement on tiktok is if you post consistently and have engaging content but it's really hard creating engaging content if you're not um doing stuff going on trips and you have a bunch of money to have a new all a new outfit every day to post on there um and it's like for me it's like i'm a funny person but i'm not tiktok funny like i'm not oh here i can record this video and make a joke about this situation it's just like I, it took me a minute to think about so i'm in person funny i'm dinner funny i'm car ride funny i'm not tiktok funny you know like i can't just make a i'll be wondering like how can you come up with all these jokes <laughs> with the situation because i can't do it like i mean of course what they're saying is funny and i agree like, ironically that's super funny what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> like right like that's what i'm saying like i'm i'm occasionally funny like i'm not like a stand-up comedian or nothing i couldn't sit here and write jokes and perform it or anything and i feel like shout out to those creators that can do that because i feel like that's almost like you're a comedian you're doing stand-up even though you're not writing it out literally but that takes a sense of uh, a good sense of humor and creativity to just like okay that made me think of this or that made me think of that or that because you know tiktok if you're on tiktok a lot um they have like sounds that that people take and they just run with it and apply it to a bunch of different situations and they're like mouthing the words of the sound but the joke or the it is like on the caption or whatever and that's kind of like how like the, the tiktok thing goes like when it comes to jokes and stuff so that's that's very different from anything that i feel like people have seen and it's something that i feel like only our generation will understand as far mm-hmm. as like comedy um so yeah shouts out to those creators for doing that but i i can't i can't like i'm no offense to anybody that because i people be like like talking bad about people who only like post like beauty content and like cute type tiktoks but that's all i post and i'm proud of it because i'm doing the bare minimum around here i have a i have a child okay i don't got time to be being a comedian for y'all y'all better be glad y'all get these looks but yeah that's my spiel yeah (laughs) that's my spiel for this week because i can't um I, I relate to a lot of that. Um, this this week has kind of been, not even kind of, it's been like stressful, just like with setting boundaries. Um, 
and you know sometimes when you have to set boundaries not all the time they're received you know the greatest but it's just you know almost kind of standing up for yourself in a way um because you know like i heard this great phrase or expression that you can't pour from an empty cup Mm -hmm. and i feel like um a lot of times people will just take 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 or um you know they don't realize that they're being and maybe not intentionally of course but you know that you are just one person and you know sometimes you sometimes you don't need like sometimes you just need a moment or a day or a week you know and it doesn't have to be due to anything wrong with you like you being sick or whatever the case may be that people think you need time like sometimes you just need that time you know and then where um and sometimes you have to you know if it takes something like exaggerate it to get that like sometimes you have to go to that because like at the end of the day you have to you know like you know like when you're on the plane and the plane is going down they say put your air mask on first before you help anyone else um oh. well, so did they, i don't remember them telling us that i was like what they tell you that they didn't tell us that when we was on the plane i about to say why would they just tell you that when just because you're landing but okay i get what you're saying now like what i'm sorry i didn't mean to like derive the conversation i was like are you serious no it's okay but um like really you have to do that though you have to take care of yourself and because i find like i'm a better like sometimes i can be moody i don't know if that's a toxic trait i feel like it's not toxic i feel like i'm just human but because i have a lot of tolerance i do have a lot of tolerance but sometimes you know because I mean, I feel like it makes you seem it may make you seem moody because when you do break, it's like a big thing. But it's not that you're moody; you're just having like a meltdown. <laughs> but I yeah, don't know. everyone but, has their faults, so I don't know. But no, I like sometimes I realize that I can be moody because, like, even not I guess like in a bad way. Like I guess like sometimes I could just be out social, da 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 da, and then like another time I could just like not want to be bothered, like mm-hmm. don't want to talk to anybody. And then, like, sometimes I can get, like, have this social phase where I just want to be out and about, like, you know. Yeah. But I don't know. I, and there's other, I guess, uh, other things that apply to that moodiness, too. I just can't think of them in the moment. Mm-hmm. But really, that's just what I've been kind of on. Just, like, allowing time for certain things, setting mm-hmm. boundaries, regardless of the reception you know standing true in how I feel and not making not allowing anyone to make me feel you know less than because I choose to do so because like I said I'm a pretty tolerant person a pretty giving person um pretty considerate person so when I ask for my time that's my time Mm. um aside from that creatively I feel, um, you know, I feel okay. Um, I recently, you know, I think what I'm gonna say, like, for me creatively, like, I always need something new. Like, I always need, like, maybe something new to work on, or not maybe new, but just different things, different projects. So, recently, like, I had a YouTube channel, just like personally, but then. Like, I deleted the videos because I don't know what's with me. I'm, like, post and delete God or goddess. Um, I tend to do that a lot. And it's weird because sometimes I tag, like, whoever is the related person in my post. But then I end up deleting it. And then I think it's weird, like, if I repost it again. and tag, Like, the people are probably like, what's going on here? <laughs> but I don't know. I, don't, I guess it's just because when I look at it. And I don't know if this is a form of, like, OCD or something. But, like, when I look at my page, I want it to, like, look a certain way aesthetically. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes when I posted this picture, I was like, oh, well, this row doesn't look exactly like da 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 you know? So I find myself doing that a lot. But anyway, um, so I relaunched my personal YouTube. I did an album review. You know, we talked about mulatto, a lot of dropping. Um, so I did something with that. Um, so, like, that's something I've been working on. 
Um, and I have ideas. I have a lot of ideas that I've written down of things I want to do. Sometimes I get the idea and then like it just takes a minute for me to work on the content. Like mm-hmm. how I said before, like the ideas, they come in abundance, but just executing it, making a visual for it, like that's, that's, I should probably put that like on a, like a list some type of list of something to work on Mm -hmm. because I need to find a way to like I guess get better at that because sometimes that delays my attempt in working on the the actual project that I'm working on um but I guess with more time and actually applying myself a little more I I could um get better at it but that's just where I've been at creatively but you know in a good space other areas of life is is you know it's content you know so that's what like what you said about you know like um like not having anything like left or like you know nothing left to pour back into yourself like mm-hmm. that reminds me of this post I saw on Facebook and it was basically saying like it can't always be 50 50 or 60 40 between two people like sometimes it's one in 99 like you have to have like at least one person in your life where you even if you don't have it all together and you just whether that be a romantic partner or whoever you're living with like you need to have someone who has your back when you have nothing like when you only have one percent to give you need someone else to like carry that 99 percent for you like uh-huh. and that's like that reminded me of that like I feel like that's true like because sometimes you're not always gonna have it's not always gonna be 50 50 like in a relationship or in a friendship or whatever it's not always gonna be like 50 50 like sometimes you're gonna have you're gonna some days you're gonna have nothing left in you like nothing to pour you know and if i feel like you need a partner or a friend or a family member who can carry that 99 for you when you can't yeah Um, yeah i think that's important yeah absolutely But, um, but um that was our check in um right now we're gonna talk about our um movies and tv um we're gonna start with jocelyn jocelyn's cabaret Uh um first i want to talk about she dropped a trailer for like the reunion the infamous reunion or whatever Uh and why why does everybody got masks on why everybody trying to look like a demon (laughs) like why like why is everyone trying to look like and what britney renner doing there right (laughs) Well, I, like, I, can't. I guess she's gonna be a host or something mm-hmm. but i feel like whenever like even last season when they had lunell as a host she didn't really do much hosting she just kind of was like talking junk with everybody else pretty much um it was yeah. weird um but yeah i thought it was i think it's gonna be interesting but i noticed they didn't show any fighting and then like people were saying like how they may like cut out parts of the fight and try to make things seem different than what actually happened so because we saw that beforehand it kind of like ruining it's ruining the reunion for me because I don't really know how to look at it should I look at it as a as a, okay well some things are being cut out so maybe this isn't really what happened or you know like I don't know how to really view it now but I guess we'll see you next week whenever whenever the reunion comes out but um as far as tonight's episode this is like the finale episode or whatever mm-hmm. and um it was like the final performance um like I said a few episodes a few episodes ago like I feel like with Jocelyn's Cabaret it's like a different show every season like last season it was a competition and this one it was more like America's Next Top Model I want to say no not America's Next Top Model like I don't know what kind of reality show it's reminding you of like I get what you're saying like um I don't know I'm trying to think of a reality show that's kind of like where it's like everyone's performing in the end, kind of like something American like Idol. the voice, yeah, yeah, like American Idol or something. Because I mean, you have people kind of coming and going in a way, mm-hmm. and um, another like the rap game, the show, the Jermaine, mm-hmm. actually what Mulatto was on. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, <laughs> um, the one that Mulatto was actually on, mm-hmm. uh. That, that's kind of how it was with Jermaine Dupree because he had the five contestants but he picked he ended up picking one person in the end to win but they stayed everyone stayed the whole time he wasn't eliminating people which I did like I like that you know he wasn't like eliminating people as the week went on because um 
you got to see you got to see more of the characters i feel like stuff with like american idol or american style model where you got a person leaving every week it's like dang i kind of want to get to know this person more get a little bit of their personality even mm-hmm. though they couldn't stay there mm-hmm. um but yeah back to the episode um i thought the performance was really good for the last episode it was a really good performance like so much more Johnson, but she is a good performer like and I feel like I just hate that she is so mean like and I hate that she's been through so much and like it's really like whatever it may be like alleged drug use or whatever that she got going on like I hate that she is letting that get a hold of her because even though she's been through a lot she needs some therapy or something because she's here now she has like a good a big platform and I feel like with Jocelyn like she she's very like jealous of other people and she definitely doesn't want anyone to take her shine because I noticed like when Jordan was like explaining to her like that she made up the new routine for this week like she was like she wanted to like you can tell she didn't want to give her too much love she just like like, okay okay like I can tell she was like a little jealous of like what they did without her being there or like shocked pretty much like impression like she didn't think they were gonna do that good she thought she was gonna come back and have to tear into all of them I feel like that's she, that's she, that's what she was ready to do, and I feel like I feel like she feel, I think she feels like she put somebody she doesn't want to put anybody else on like she doesn't want to like let nobody get too ahead of her like she's okay with them getting like little Instagram followers and all that but she didn't want them getting her type of platform, and I feel like if Jocelyn would say kind of like a regal person and like say like if she thinks she's this queen and she thinks she's the baddest she needs to portray herself like that because if you're the baddest you don't have to constantly say it you know just be that you know just be above above everyone be like the leader be all that um i don't feel like she act has like to, lexi right act like lexi is like act very calm she's not like and i don't want her to be like throw away her personality because that's what got yeah. her there but i feel like a powerful personality is also very toxic and comes from a lot of trauma For and sure. i feel like that's hindering her a lot even though we laugh at a lot of the stuff that she says but it's extremely like toxic and mm-hmm. and it's coming from a really like dark place mm-hmm. and i feel like um even if she were to like get better and you know have the platform and someone else may end up being better than her they can always say hey, I got here because of Jocelyn. They'll always be able to say that regardless of how big yeah. they get. And you can keep that, you always have that platform to put other people on if that's what you really want to do. But I don't feel like that's what Jocelyn really wants to do. She wants to treat people how she was treated, you know? Um, and it's sad because I feel like at her core, at her deepest core, she pro- she really is a good person. But she's been through so much is making her into a really bad person, you know, and she does really terrible and says really terrible things like and the fact so, that she can keep going is not doing nothing but boosting it. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. Like I I, I can't take it. And um but as far as like the, the episode, I feel like she was really um it was a really good episode. Um I liked the off performances. I think everyone looked really good. Um uh, there was a lot of genitalia going on we were showing the genitalia for no reason i was like okay and i mean i think the part where like even like the part where she was like she wants to see like she, um one of the contestants like she went she asked jocelyn asked to see like her her um her genitalia her genital area or whatever because she was a virgin and she was a lesbian so she never had sex with a boy before and i feel like she was kind of took that moment to kind of embarrass her in a way because I feel like I mean even though she didn't seem embarrassed I feel like she tried to embarrass her in that way um because I feel like she really couldn't deny her being there that's why she put her in the cabaret she was such a good dancer but because she wasn't initially attracted to her or thought she was attractive or thought other people would think she was attractive she didn't want her to, I don't feel like she wanted K. Capri to be in Jocelyn's cabaret but because at the time, I feel like Kate Capri isn't really talented. Like, she can do, like, some really good moves and keep up with the choreography, like she said. Um, <laughs> I feel like she's, that's why she, like, you can't, and then I feel like that was, she also put Kate Capri in there to kind of do a stab at um, Amber, who she really had beef with. Because I feel like she put Kate Capri in there instead of Amber, and it's like, okay, well, I got your enemy in here, or I picked her over you, just like, this is another stab at Amber. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, every choice that Jocelyn makes, is there's a specific reason for it like um that's like I feel like that's another reason why she picked Chanel for the for to be the winner last season because Chanel isn't gonna like fight back against her she's not gonna 
Like, she's not going to fight her. She's not going to yell back at her. She's going to let her be her little punching bag. That I feel like that's another part of the reason why she let Chanel um, uh, win last season. But I feel like Chanel did deserve to be in the cabaret I, over a diamond who says, constantly says the N-word. Because um, I feel like diamond, she pulled together at the last minute. Um, and so did Chanel, but Chanel's been really constantly working at this. And I feel like she's proven that she really wants to do it. And I feel like Diamond has just been kind of sitting back looking cute the whole time. And then last episode, she showed her boobs and throwed around a bunch of times. And now she killed it all of a sudden. I don't get where that's coming from. Um, I feel uh, like with that, I feel like Jocelyn probably pulled Lexi to the side and just told her don't pick Chanel like yeah. I feel like that's what happened and yeah. that's why she didn't because Lexi reason for not pick, picking Chanel is just like it's, it's not solid enough for me I feel like yeah like uh Chanel has been doing fantastic each and every time like how you said so if, if Jocelyn don't want Chanel to be there just I, I, and right. I 100% think that's what that was right um, but yeah, that's like pretty much my opinion of the episode. And what else happened? And I feel like they kind of dropped a little speech at the end. It was cute. You know, I feel like they did it just kind of to fill time because that's the most we've ever seen from a performance. Most of because like most of this, like, I don't feel like this is a really good season either because another part of it, like, I always feel like when it comes to reunion, it's a whole different show. Like, um, it's like, like what like I wasn't expecting all this like they were like talking about behind the scenes drama which is what I hate about Jocelyn's cabaret because like most of the time like think about when Flavor Flav was on or stuff like that we didn't know about any behind the scenes drama that was going on we they talked about the stuff that happened on the season they didn't talk about stuff that was going on after like Mm -hmm. every now and then you may have heard like a radio beef or something when they did interviews on the radio or something Mm -hmm. but you didn't see this like we couldn't see like the celebrities constantly going back and forth on social media because that really wasn't a thing then but now there's just like all this like throwing shots and throwing shade that's adding a fuel to the fire for the renewal which is i guess a good thing for as far as like the tv and stuff but <laughs> i just like because for me I, I, just, I just feel lost because if you if you let's just say you just watch Justin's cabaret flat out and you don't follow any of them you're not gonna know what's going on you're not gonna know about all this other beef and twitter shade and all that like it's just like what was going on like mm-hmm. and then plus they start the show i feel like feeling that they're going to start the show with so i hear you've been talking about me online and all that like it's just like confusing like i don't know yeah yeah i agree with a lot of what you said about this episode um i do i do love to to actually watch the performance of them when they actually are i like watching just all of it when they're actually getting along and they're focused on the goal like you can really see like each person's potential and their talent um and when people who work together well also with the other girls is important because even though there was a little like i feel like capri wanted to start something with lollipop um Lexi kind of mediated that and yeah. and got it back on track. Right. And, and she didn't want to make it like a bad energy for the performance. Right. Um, right. That's what I like about Lexi Blue. I feel like she's a good leader. Like, mm-hmm. and it's like it makes me think like if Jocelyn wasn't sick or sick, whatever she was the last episode, she didn't seem sick. <laughs> um, it, she, I I feel like it would have been a whole different outcome. Like we probably would have seen a whole different people there, you know, because mm-hmm. she probably wouldn't have like evaluated it the same way Lexi did and I thought Lexi made a really good decision by she made a lot of good moves mm-hmm. with, with making um Jordan like a uh, part of the um um choreograph or whatever mm-hmm. she did a good job with that like and I made it and I feel like that really made the show like good um right. I wasn't expecting Jocelyn to give Lollipop any like like uh screen Privilege. time or whatever mm-hmm. yeah because like she's like got into it so much for her um it's weird but um yeah I thought I like the fact that Lexi Blow took control um I definitely feel like if Jocelyn was there it would have been a completely different situation um but yeah uh um uh yeah so I I, I like um uh, I feel like Jocelyn just needs to make and like you said about her giving um I guess other people shine but I feel like 
like if they have another season like she should let Lexi you know like sometimes on the dating shows like the guys have like their friend or a girl or something they know help them pick the women like mm-hmm. I feel like she could make that like her role like you know on the show just like helping her make decisions because maybe that'll maybe that'll like uh reduce some of the drama that's on there and I know drama yeah. is a part of reality but I just feel like I don't know because I don't think Lexi and Jocelyn they're gonna be a thing anymore like after this reunion because I heard that allegedly like Jocelyn slapped Lexi in the face like um, Dang. so yeah um that's that makes me they, sad yeah I, it doesn't make me sad I was just like okay that's not shocking um but being like that they Lex- were- but Lexi I, you know you can really see I for me I can really see that Jocelyn is like someone she looks up to and yeah. and I know a lot of the girls say that on the show they're here for Jocelyn they're here for Jocelyn but you know Lexi just kind of to me goes about it a different way like you yeah know. she's she's just a good person um mm-hmm. not I, did, I like I'm not saying I don't feel sad for her I don't feel like sad about their bond because I don't feel like Jocelyn really wasn't like a genuine bond on both ends because uh, I mean yeah. Jocelyn may have been using her for whatever you know I feel like mm-hmm. there was maybe some like sexual tension going on mm-hmm. and I feel like that kind of what that was kind of carried most of their relationship mm-hmm. and bond um not just them truly caring about each other both yeah on both ends but um I don't think they Lexi is not gonna be working with her in the future um but I hope that she can find her own platform maybe on zoom i'm sure i hope so that'd be really cool and it's really weird watching her her, watching her curse at people because she's very like very monotone in her voice but when she's like trying to be very strict it's kind of like it's kind of hard to take you seriously sometimes because it's like you're very like calm all the time Mm -hmm. and sometimes that makes you a good leader but sometimes it doesn't (laughs) because it's like more more like a maternal she's calm in like a maternal way Mm -hmm. and she's a leader in that way like a very like a mom kind of way because she is a a parent um with Kay Capri I feel like Kay Capri I feel like she's a good person I just feel like because she's on a reality show like her personality is on 10 like everyone pretty much everyone's personality is on 10 like who they are in their real life is like it's times 10 like and she's probably like a little extra in her real life but on reality show she's like amped up even more maybe because of everybody else is amped up people doing stuff twerking it's just like she probably feels like she has to be like on 10 all the time I feel like that's part of the reason why she acts like that um uh I feel like seeing the way she supported amber after the reunion um that kind of like made me think okay i feel like she's a really good person because she really seems like she sticks by her friends and she seems like a cool person to be around um outside of this show like she seems like she's a really good person outside of it but in the show she is very annoying like she's extremely annoying in the show like I, I just can't with her but I feel like just seeing how she is off camera and how she talks about what really happened she seems like a genuine person she's just a little extra I feel like yeah um did you have anything else else to say about the episode um uh, no I just um uh... I thought it was cool. I always enjoy the scenes where Jocelyn and Ballistic are just like chopping it up. That's just like entertaining to me. Um, but no, I, uh, uh, Lollipop was late to practice, but she did do really well learning the routine, and maybe that's why she felt the need not to come. Not that I'm excusing it, but right. I feel like she should notify like people because they could be worried right. or concerned. Like that was a little rude. But yeah. she has an arrogance to her. But to me, I, you know, her, uh, Jocelyn asking her to go out there. Like, I feel like sometimes, I feel like, you know, I, I'm not saying it took me off guard. Like, I feel like Jocelyn is the, like a random person that's going to try to put you on the spot. And especially yes. if you, think, you give any decay in the, if you give any indication that you feel like you popping, she's like, right. oh, let me see. You know, she's going right. to test you. Right, for real. And um, I think that was just her way of doing that. But, you know, I felt like she did okay. I mean, it wasn't she, she was in, like, on the chair the whole time. But I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but I love their outfits. Like, their outfits are always pretty cute. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I just like seeing like the faces of the people or the other dancers yeah. like when they first especially when it's their first night and they go out there and they're like oh the cabaret da, 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 like that just like that happiness because a lot mm-hmm. of them like are very catty and very yeah. um like they just have like a lot of tainted like characteristics sometimes but all i feel of them are like, very mean all of them have a very mean streak in them like even lexi like you know she's a good person very probably the nicest one out of all of them mm-hmm. it's like they had those kind of things that they say like oh like for people who are like me you and me who are very soft-hearted you can tell they all have like a very rough edge around them like it's mm-hmm. like oh okay sorry mm-hmm. i'll get it together <laughs> excuse me <laughs> Sorry. but i guess i like seeing them um on the red carpet because that seems like when they're most pure you know yeah. like when they experience that yeah i like that moment too because that mm-hmm. seems like the only moment where they're like genuinely happy <laughs> yeah yeah honestly but that's it um, for me in the episode um i guess we should get into the celebrity news um it's been on tip of everybody's tongue just breaking pretty much breaking news that just happened mm-hmm. um, we're just gonna go ahead and start deep diving to this oscar beef that's been going on with chris rock and will smith it just happened yeah. um so basically keep it short and sweet um <laughs> jada pinka smith she has a uh, alopecia and that's like a condition where you lose your hair uh chris rock he made a bald joke Will Smith didn't mm. like it. He walked up there and slapped him in the face. Um, that's what happened. I'm not about to get all deep into details. That's what happened. But um, how I feel about it is if you go and look at the video, for one, there's a lot to unpack here because this just happened. So it's like, wait a minute. Like, what just happened, first of all? Like, and then it's like, okay. When I was first watching the video, I, I noticed like immediately Jada was upset by it you know because i saw a video of like everyone's reactions or whatever immediately jada she was upset by the joke um but what i was confused about was will he immediately laughed so how do you go from being like <laughs> to pure anchor in like two seconds and i'm guessing i'm guessing he noticed jada's disdain but it's just like or he ain't like, at first right and it's just like yeah maybe he didn't get it or hear or maybe he was I, the only thing i can think of that he was laughing at the, whatever he said before he was still laughing at that maybe and because i feel like when first i made that joke the laughs are kind of dying down from the previous one maybe and i feel like maybe wilson was probably still laughing at the old joke i don't know but then um he walked up there and you know punched him and um basically what happened after that i guess um there was I read an article where there was talk pretty much of a conversation between um, Will Smith and Denzel Washington and somebody else and it's just like try, oh Tyler Perry and they were trying to comfort him and Denzel Washington was giving him like advice and stuff and like basically Denzel Washington said that you know when you're at your highest moment you know there's going to be like negativity or the devil or some crap and um uh Will Smith and Will know, Smith should know that by now yeah and it's just like for one, I want to make it clear that what Chris Rock said was wrong, of course. And um, uh, I, I guess I would say he deserved it, but if it was in another setting, because I feel like, like Will Smith, like this is your big night, um, and it's like this is not the first time I'm sure someone has said something bad about you. So that's why I'm just not under or about Jada, because I mean, I but I feel like the reason he did it is because of all the stuff that's been boiling up over these past few months mm-hmm. not just that comment but because it was such a big night for both of them i was watching a tiktok earlier and they were saying how will and jada were a big advocate for when like the Oscars kept nominating white people over black people and stuff like that they're a big advocate for that and for and i guess this meant this night meant a lot to them because they were shining light a lot on a lot of black people tonight and i guess like it was very tasteless for chris rock to you know make a joke about a black woman's hair on live tv um and i'm I, he definitely he was wrong for that for sure um but it's just like was i don't know i guess it's hard for me to really believe that this is genuine from will smith i don't know why it's just so hard for me to believe that he was really upset about not the joke like it was really hard for me to 
like believe that because he was upset about something but it just it was something else other than the joke I feel like I don't feel like it was just that I feel like it was just a lot of build up because after he gave his speech he was crying and he was very like you know hurt by something and you can tell he had a lot weighing on him and I feel like it was something else like I don't feel like it was just about that joke like I feel like it was just something deeper going on I don't know what but I don't know it's just hard for me and then plus Will Smith is an amazing actor so it's really hard for me to believe an actor you know (laughs) you're sitting here winning the award for best actor not saying actors are liars but (laughs) it's just like I don't know I don't I can't tell if it was staged or not it was just like it was just too much I need like another day to unpack this because it's just like yeah what is going on like I can't even tell like if he's being genuine about it or not because he's such a good actor so I can't tell if this is his true emotions or not because I feel like now that Will Smith has gotten older what I like about him is that he's being a lot more candid and honest about his experiences as an actor um which I do believe those but it's just like for this to all happen it was just so quick it was just like joke look <laughs> like, like it's just like, okay wait a minute I thought you was gonna do it I can't I can't do what he did up there. You heard that that smack up there. Everybody <laughs> heard that sound. I can't repeat that. No, um, my computer. <laughs> but um that was crazy. I was like, okay. So I I I, I know sometimes I'm a bit naive on these things, but I think it was real because I watched Chris Brown I mean Lord. I watched Chris Rock after the whole thing and he just like was like I had a loss for words and then yeah went, I'm going back and forth like, I can't tell like because it's like not just because it looked real the reaction wise is just because it was so unexpected mm-hmm. and it's just like no one ever watches the Oscars I don't watch the Oscars the Oscars are always boring so it's just like it's just and it's the fact that they had Megan Thee Stallion performing they, Beyonce was there and it's just like well she was saying some like weird rap song or something doing something weird on stage who and Megan Thee Stallion and it's like you got Megan Thee Stallion there you got Chloe and Hal you got all these black people and it's just like they it's like and then of course something like this right you know? right that's why it's just like okay what else is going on but finish your thoughts like finish what you were saying um, when you said Megan the Stallion was doing something weird on stage, that just <laughs> oh, you see, you saw it? No, I'm going to look because <laughs> it's white. Go look at the video, it's on the shade room, it's one of the top posts. It's just weird. Like, what are you doing? It's like, why is she even there? Like, not saying I, I mean, I'm all for her getting her bag and her coin, but. It's like, what is this? The fact that you called it weird just got it's me weird. Like, 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 go and listen to it. Okay, I will. Um, but um, dang, hold on, <laughs> that's just funny. Um, but yeah, Chris, Br- um, why do I keep calling him Chris Brown? Chris Brock, uh, was like struggling to get it back together, and um, yeah. they was commending him in the comments on his professionalism. Um, I mean, I guess. But, but what mean, did you really expect him to do? Like he's right. hosting. Um, but it's okay. So at first, to be honest, at first I didn't know what the joke was about. I I heard, I, I um read it in the comments. Mm -hmm. um but before i read it like when jada did her eye roll like to me that was more impactful than the slap because first of all jada to me is just like beautiful but uh her personality is comical to me Mm -hmm. and i guess just from seeing like her roles and music um yeah movies and stuff so when she hit that eye roll (laughs) I chuckled because like it was just I think it was it was another movie or something and she was like disgusted with this guy and that kind of flashed back to me of that so I thought that I thought I liked that better than the slap her doing yeah. the eye roll for me that's that's you know that was enough 
And then um, Jaden Smith talking about some, and that's how we do it. My dad's speech made me cry. Jaden, stay out of this. <laughs> stay over there where you at in LA somewhere. Um, so that's like you got out of the mood. You wasn't up there fighting and punching nobody. Sit down. I think, um, I think, like what you said about like all the black people being there for this to take place that's already what they think of us you know when when you know we get together and go to places so and then you have someone like will smith doing that and it's just like for me that means something you know Mm -hmm. there's a meaning with that you know even if it is real or fake and that's why i thought it was kind of fake because it's like you don't have just like they could it could be any other actor getting into alter- altercation backstage or anything but no you chose will smith person that's everybody like, loves yeah to, that's to like fight. barack obama getting up there slapping right. somebody you know and then it's like chris rock you know he's you know he's not necessarily like as big as will smith but he's a big actor you know especially mm-hmm. among white people White people know who Chris Rock is because of Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. And he's friends with Adam Sandler. So, you know, it's just like you have these two very like high caliber people fight. Mm -hmm. Well, not fighting, but (laughs) getting into it on stage. It's just like that means something. And you've got Megan Thee Stallion in there walking around rapping in front of everybody and making jokes. And it's just like, it's just, it's just like, it's just like, and then y'all doing this in front of Beyonce though. Like y'all couldn't have waited till later that if y'all gonna do it in front of Beyonce. That's weird. Don't do it in front of her. Could wait till later for that. It's just I don't understand. Um. Okay, cause we gonna get into this Beyonce performance in a second, but um. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's mixed emotions towards yeah. us because like you know i feel him for like don't talk about my girl like go there, i'm about to put yeah. hands on you like yeah. I, I i i but it's like, and then like i start putting comments like oh you didn't do august I me like that how do y'all know that <laughs> yeah, anytime they get a chance to throw that entanglement joke in there they're gonna throw in an entanglement joke like and then like even with the um when that happened they, people in the comments talking about some entanglement oh that's an entanglement no it's not <laughs> You know what? Sometimes I hate I hate the comment section. And that's another reason why I believe in turning those off because people be making something out of nothing. Like they have it be no way related to what y'all talking about. Right. That's not even related to the situation. And it's like, you know, there's already jokes on Facebook talking about some, oh, if you're not coming like Will Smith, don't talk to me. <laughs> like, please, like Jada and Will have a whole nother type of relationship than you and your dude that's been together for two years. Like, please. Like, I just can't. Um, but one thing I do know is that the Smiths have a platform, Red right. Table Talk, and this is not gonna be the end of what All right, and then they're gonna have to heal it. from that. <laughs> oh, we brought Chris Rock up here to heal from that situation at the not Oscars. heal. Like, yes. I know I see it. We because we all need to heal from it. And then there's some we're gonna be like, Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh. yeah. Like yeah. I can see it. I can see the episode now. Mm-hmm. They may not talk about it soon, but they're gonna have they definitely gonna they're be gonna talk about, about it. it. Like yeah. uh, I cannot. Um but yeah, that that was just and I and you know what I had just turned my TV off um and I didn't catch it in the moment but in the era of social media I didn't miss to. I didn't yeah <laughs> I didn't miss a thing um I I went right to a couple places I went to TikTok first I went to YouTube yeah. YouTube gave me a longer clip of it and um yeah so that was that was that's gonna be the talk for the next three hundred years. <laughs> the next um, 300 years so uh mm-hmm. but to say though if we want to talk about the uh oscars a little bit um well i only have a couple points to make aside from that one of them beyonce but i didn't really catch a lot of the oscars i did see the intro and no one had, ever does it's always yeah. boring <laughs> but it did feel like it was going to actually be good because they had um Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall hosting. And I did like that. Um, so it was just nice to see, you know, Black women up there hosting. Right. Um, I, li- I'm a, I like Wanda Sykes. I think she's hilarious. And I like Regina Hall. Amy Schumer's okay. You know, I don't, 
you know have any really emotion towards her Mm -hmm. uh but she was funny um and then i only saw up to and reason a whole thing i was turned to it because i heard beyonce was performing so i was like let me check it out Mm -hmm. but i didn't know where her performance was coming and then i got you know a little sidetracked from it and then when i went back that's when all this uh events had t- taken place so um just to get into the beyonce performance a little bit because you know she performed be alive it's one of my favorite songs um just ever one of my favorite like songs with a message um and and it really serves its purpose i feel like um you know first i want to talk about first of all beyonce don't miss she mm-hmm. don't miss period like er- everything i can't she don't miss um and i like the little theme of it it was in green it was giving you tennis court vibes it was Um, so gorgeous like mm, it was period and the girls had the bees like the classic serena williams like Mm -hmm. i love that that was such a nice stretch like i love that and you know blue came did her little cameo (laughs) um and you know i really I don't have like criticism of course i loved it you know beyonce gonna give you vocals um her her hair her makeup i love the look um like the the you know i i really can't yeah you know it was was perfect um so yeah that was it yeah um and the only thing else I had to say, um, well, I guess that's that's it from the Grammys. So I'm just gonna move on to something else because uh-huh. <laughs> I really didn't have anything else to say about the Grammys other than just Will Smith. Um, I'm glad I saw a lot of black people, you know, taking home awards. That's also I'm happy. To see that. Oh um, wait, 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 wait. So, um, uh, this kind of blend into segments because I know we talk about TV and movies and stuff, but the Oscars did make me want to check out a couple movies, mm-hmm. um. So I want to check out West Side Story. The girl that won supporting actress, I did see her acceptance speech, and um, and it almost made me cry because it was just like so so like ugh, I just love moments like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so West Side Story and the Grammys didn't necessarily make me want to watch this next movie, but I saw it like on my on demand thing, mm-hmm. and it's just called Dog. But oh, really. Yeah, it's just the name of it is Dog. But I think I saw a trailer for it and I kind of want to check it out. Um, we still got to get you to watch Dogs, A Dog's Purpose. Remember that movie I told you about that movie? I you do. would love that movie. It's going to make you cry, but you would love that movie, A Dog's Purpose. That's an amazing movie. Yeah, because I feel like as an adult, the dog movie is not hitting the way they did in childhood. It may be because it's an adult now, but movies like Air Bud and Homeward Bound, like they were beautiful and i think the only dog movie i saw as an adult was like marley and me i'm like why Mm -hmm. did y'all make this because the dog died in the end and i'm like that's not a good ending like at least let him have a puppy or something to continue it on right i hate movies that end like and just end like what i'm supposed to do with this this don't make me feel right right (laughs) it needs to have some kind of takeaway even if even if it's a bad takeaway it can't just be just like the dog die or something like that like it has to have some kind of takeaway or something you take away from the movie like i don't get it yeah um, but that was all i wanted to add about the oscars i wanted to talk about uh lotto and you know she came up with her new album mm-hmm. and you know she was saying in an interview like basically like there she, there was a guy that she had on her, her track um I haven't heard this, so there was a guy that she had on her track that was preventing her from basically finishing a song or clearing the record because he wanted to, he wanted to have sex with her. And wait, what happened? He didn't clear the record. He did, but because I mean, of course he did because the album, you know, is here or whatever. But it was making it, it was making the longer segment making it longer oh. than it would have because he kept pressing her you know have sex and stuff um and you know it's alleged everyone's assuming that it was Kodak Black because he was on her album and you know Kodak Black has made comments in the past where he said that he 
sleeps with all the all the female rappers that he does collaborations with. He sleeps with them. Um, that's like a big thing for him. Like he has to sleep with them. He's said that in the past, so it's alleged that he was the one. And then he's gonna tweet. He was like, first thing that made me want to just throw the whole tweet away. He was like, that mulatto, that mulatto girl, that mulatto girl, um, is not talking about me, y'all. Um, he like, I don't be pressing something like I don't be pressing these females and stuff like. First of all, a hit dog gonna holler. First of all, no, you if you have to sit here and make a tweet about that's not you, then it's you. <laughs> but that's how I feel, and I'm, I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious that it was him. And I like the fact that it's making me like a lotto even more because I like that she's speaking up about this kind of stuff. And you know, I feel like Nikki, she does like to on it but she really doesn't like so I dive deep in there too because I feel like she still wants that male cosign but I feel like Lotto doesn't really you know she's very like candid and she's very real about the stuff she talks about um but I feel like it may be in like her later interviews after that she kind of tamed it down a little bit because she didn't really want to talk about it anymore because it was kind of taking away from her album um her album I did think was really really good like I think it's definitely something like you can listen to all the way through um, I have like favorites and stuff like that. It was a really good album. Um, and she's always had bars. Um, but I, uh, I really liked her album. It was really good. Um, do you have anything you want, to, you want to say about her album or? Um, for uh, the first part about uh, the alleged Kodak thing or whoever it may be, I feel like that's what sucks about being. Uh, a female and a male yeah. dominated you're always objectified yeah and like that's just it's just ridiculous and like, like who do you, it think is, you are yeah and kodak ew like he just annoys me like just if he's like and i haven't really heard that much of his music maybe like one or two tracks and they're okay but i feel like if he just like just didn't talk and just made music like he need to be like the weekend or something because right right when he talk- i mean because i like some of kodak songs but none to be writing for him like that like mm-mm. and yeah. i don't know it's the self-hate for me he has a lot of issues we could hold, have a whole nother podcast just talk about him because <laughs> he goes through a lot like there's some of the stuff that he says it's, it's just so problematic like yeah i mean yeah. I don't know. and um He's. I feel like he would be like the son of Lil Boosie or something. Definitely. Um, how they act. But uh, yeah, for us, like, and Mulatto is not like problematic. She seems very easy to deal with. Right. And right. I feel like, um, like I feel like she's the type of person that would, you know, tell you what's up from the beginning, like what she right. plan on doing, how the business going down, da 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 da, and um you know she was right for speaking on that and yeah. she's already had like some criticism just like with her being an artist which I kind of spoke about on the album review thing I did um and like I feel like she's just trying to if she did tone it down a bit <laughs> excuse me I'm sorry if she did tone it down a bit like just trying to like stay away from the criticism as much as you can because yeah. I think she wants to focus on you know just being an artist and sometimes that's hard mm-hmm. but I feel like as an artist like the things that come along with your job like you have a right to speak about so I'm glad she did touch a light on that um I did hear her album as well of course I don't know I did a review um and I did like it uh so I just I will, I'm looking forward to see more of what she does mm-hmm. and the fact that she exposed that with happening even if she doesn't you know talk, this is my first time hearing about it but even if she doesn't talk about it for a long time it still brings like that awareness you yeah. know and I'm sure that's not the f- and hopefully that can be something that prevents or reduces that behavior um, yeah. in the future so um, that's that's my thoughts on that um something else that's going on in the female rap world is doja cat basically saying she's quitting music because publicity <laughs> stunt 
Well, this is what happened. She was performing somewhere and it, the weather was like really bad. So I guess they had to cancel or something. They had to cancel her concert. So she went back to her hotel and then someone had leaked her hotel information. And she had like crazed fans in like oh. Brazil that were like be- pretty much act- begging her to come out. And then <laughs> she wouldn't come out of her hotel room. So they started saying like racial slurs towards her and stuff like that. So I guess that's like what's causing like her to have like kind of a meltdown and not wanting to be in the industry anymore, which is understandable. Um, but I mean, I feel like she does this every three months. It would be more understandable if she didn't do it so often because I feel like every few months she says that she's stuck. quitting. But I mean, at the end of the day, I don't feel like, you know, I would understand if she didn't want to be in the industry anymore because that's crazy. Like, people are literally shouting racial stirs at you because you won't leave your hotel room. Like, you're not even performing. And it's just like, it makes you think, do artists, like, have to be an artist or, like, a performer 24-7? Are they ever allowed to be, All like, she themselves? had to do was pick up her phone, call security, say people yeah. are outside my door and well i don't know if that's all she had to do because i'm just yeah. thinking they were like, they were outside of her door they were outside of the hotel building and they were yelling it at her window um ah hold on <laughs> now but and i'm not a celebrity but the last time i checked when i went to a hotel and i went to the room at minimum, the room shouldn't be floor level, right? Yeah. So how are they getting to? Are they? They must have. Okay, I I don't I probably don't know enough about the story to be commenting, but I feel like people can't get to. If Doja, if Doja, I feel like if Doja Cat don't want to rap, just say that. Just don't yeah. try to find something else because that limelight and that lifestyle is not for everybody. Like, I could 100% see me, like, having one, if I were to have one hit, like, letting the one hit right. hit Same. and then Same. doing something else because, yeah. like, it's, it's, you know, that lifestyle is not for everybody. You can't do nothing. You got to have security with you all the time. Well, depending yeah. on what level of celebrity you get. But I feel like um, I would hate I would hate to see her not continue because she's so talented. Yeah. But if she wanted to convert and maybe to just like writing for people, that could mm-hmm. be a good alternative. Yeah. Um, because her, her brain, the way it operates, it still needs to be in that world because it's too yeah. crazy um do you think doja cat is a rapper like because room i got on a on a interview and said that doja cat was not a rapper she thought she was very talented but she didn't think doja cat was a rapper and i feel like she is i feel like she is a rapper she just sings on a lot of pop songs she doesn't rap on hip-hop tracks she raps on like pop sounding tracks so i feel like that makes maybe Rumi ma who i feel like Rumi ma comes from a rap world where it's like you're battling like it's like from the streets it's like a raw rap and like so i can understand why she why she would say that mm-hmm. so from her saying that it's understandable but i don't really necessarily consider her not to be a rapper because she does have bars but she's not like a battle rapper you're not gonna catch her battling she's very like mainstream in a way but she's mm-hmm. good you know she's still good at what she does yes and i I, I agree with what you're saying because it's Rumi Ma and her perception of rap, which I feel like her perception of rap and being a rapper is exactly what you're saying. It's more hard. It's more street. It's more mm-hmm. gritty. It's more tough. And Doja Cat is none of those things. Well, <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, she doesn't appear to be. And I feel like if I were to like rap, like I would mm-hmm. be. Uh, doja cat category versus right. a remy ma category but i feel like if you're putting words together and the way you are saying them like you're speaking like that's rap like i feel like rap is 2022 rap has evolved so much i right. feel like she may right. be like a, a pop rap or a mainstream rap like i feel like it can be categorized just like how people have mumble rap you know um so i feel like she's creating the lane for that um and nikki kind of does it but nikki is both sides like you know because of her background but when she makes stuff like um 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 
starships was meant to fly like that and uh what's the other one uh super base like that's in that realm of what doja cat is doing i feel like just yeah. doja cat is just like expanding in that um mm-hmm. and i like that that's needed because not every especially women female rappers not every woman is hard not every right rap that way not everyone not every woman wants to be gritty like some mm-hmm. girls want to just like maybe rap about luxury or you know right. be be cute and be like you know preppy and they should have the space for that where they can do that and still be classified as a rapper 100 um, percent, and still stand with all the other rappers who may have a different style and we, you know stand together like, like we, there should be a space for all black women there shouldn't have to be one category of female rap to be considered a rapper um, exactly and what doja cat is doing i feel like if it were like i feel like doja cat is only able to get away with that because of being I hate to bring race into it but race has a lot to do with a lot of things Mm -hmm. so I feel like if that was a black girl like she would be highly criticized for calling herself a rapper and and making that kind of music because I've thought about that myself like I've thought about taking a pop beat and and putting a rap over it because Mm -hmm. the thing is um I feel like you know non-black people come into our culture Mm -hmm. and they can make music and be welcomed and there's nothing wrong with that but i feel like we need to allow that same ability for our own people like how can you and it's such a contradiction when it comes to like music entertainment acting sometimes of what our culture you know accepts and then the things that they kind of diss like how lil nas x went into the country realm you Mm -hmm. know like black people are not you know one way money right. you know um so a black a black girl that looks black identifies as black can needs to be seen in like a, a poppy world or whatever you want to call it like and and still doing rap because i feel like the rap girls that are out now like they all were the ones that you know are in the category like rising on the shade room Mm -hmm. you know people the ones that people talk about you know they all have the same type of content yeah and it's all very similar and i get that it's more of them and that's great but let's diversify our content let's get new things out there you know right uh and i think um azalea I haven't really heard her music, but I feel like Azalea Banks was one of the girls that made a different type of rap. Maybe yes, in that she would dojo. be so she would be so popular if she wasn't so problematic. Yeah, but it's just like well, Azalea Banks. She says things that are right, and then she says things that are so wrong. So mm-hmm. it's just like you, I don't know what to do with her because she is. I, I do listen to some of her music, and it's, she is a really, really good. She makes really good music, but. She'd be so much in a better place if she would just, I don't know, I don't want to say her be quiet because she's very, very <laughs> smart. She's a very smart woman, but some of the things she says is just so problematic. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's giving kind of wish kind of the way she runs off of the mouth sometimes. It's just like, where is, this, where is this coming from? I can see that. Right. But, you know, just as far as like, you know, just like the music, I feel like I, I support female rappers. I love them. I think that the representation is great in hip hop because you know women. We're the only female rappers are the only ones doing stuff when you think about it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, what other? I mean, Gunna, Lil Baby. That's yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> like, yeah, like and it's like I just want male them rappers to... aren't going to give you a performance. They're not going to give you glam. I mean, and it's like. And it's not even, I don't even, I don't even want to like talk bad about male rappers, period. Because think about how male rappers were in the 2000s Lil John, Ludacris, you know, they gave you a show, they gave you a performance, you know, they danced, they got you involved in the crowd. But now they just like, just talk about depression. And I'm not saying you can't talk about your feelings or nothing, but it's just like, that's all we get from male rappers right all these days is a gold chain, a little clap every now and then. Little walk around the stage, little point at you, maybe. And that's pretty much all you get. I like Monday Gill. I feel like he kind of gets a good performance sometimes. He'd be tired, but you know, he still give a good performance. 
But yeah, I can't even think of any real rappers that give you a, <laughs> a good performance. It's the he be tired for me. Like he do. Like he be out of breath sometimes. Because of I mean, all that okay. um Wakisha. Yeah. But uh yeah, I, I just I just wanna see I just oh that comment almost is a little bit triggering by Remy because I feel like, you know, on State of the Culture, she seemed very uh, you know, open and knowledgeable and like wanting for you know women and I a part of me gets that but a part of that is a little toxic for me because like let's and I think her her viewpoint on that has a lot of value so if Remy Ma says she ain't a rapper like that means something because Remy Ma raps you know right so she has to be careful what she says you know and I'm pretty sure she didn't mean it I can tell she didn't mean anything like bad like yeah. she said like she thinks Doja Cat is like a good rapper mm-hmm. like not a good rapper but a good you know artist or whatever but she mm-hmm. didn't think she was a rapper and the problem is with the audience like sometimes so often I think what artists say get misconstrued and I hate that because you can yeah you can literally say something whatever it is and a person takes it and interprets mm-hmm. it a whole nother way and then it gets blown out of proportion that's like, why Beyonce doesn't talk <laughs> Bam. like like that's one thing i understand like i understand like i probably would be like i don't want i feel like if i was like a big celebrity because i do this podcast i definitely wouldn't want to be quiet all the time because I, I do a podcast so of course i wouldn't be silent on all situations because just that's just how i am i'm very open about you know my life and the things i go through because at the end of the day you can't hide, you can't hide it forever people gonna know what's going on and it's just like for me i would if i was how i want people to see me i'll be very open not too open because i want to share everything about my life but i'll be very open like this is what it is and this is what it isn't um because you know, I, I really don't care <laughs> for me i would probably like I, I feel like i would address things but through my art so similar to beyonce like if something happened where you know people were questioning it or there were blogs posting about it like I would address it but it would be through it would be through like how I create um I'm not I feel like I because sometimes like even when you do address something like you sit down and let's have an interview let's talk about it people are still going to think what they want to think and I feel like it's not your own way yeah it's not worth it and I um and then that would bring more attention to what you came to do like if you're only addressing stuff through your art and through your create creativity then that's how people will follow yeah. and, you know whatever so right. that would be my my way like i like i'm not writing until all book like you know <laughs> i just don't i don't see it. i i enjoy finding a way to whatever my message is creating an idea and then I'm sure at that point you probably have more resources, more tools to create. Mm-hmm. So then you can express it, you know. That's how I, I would I would do it. Yeah. But yeah, that's it for um how I feel about oh, that was kinda that was kinda triggering for me. <laughs> because I feel like I'm a I would be like I wouldn't be the hardest of rappers. And I I don't right. wanna be the hardest of rappers, but you know, what you I be would, respected in the community exactly and i will also like collaborate with the hard rappers because those worlds mix whether they want to accept it or not like even though you may not have lived on the street you may not been in jail you may not did none of that the Mm. things that the people have been in jail and whatever have rap about still in everyday life sometimes like the corporate world correlates with like the trap world like there's been plenty of ti songs or whatever right. and you talk about like hustling da, 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 people bop, whatever those stuff that stuff exists exists in corporate worlds like you have right. ops you have people trying to stop you from promotion or whatever the case yeah. may be those worlds are parallel despite mm-hmm. of how people look at them and i feel like it just takes two people to kind of like you know introduce that for it to get to the masses right or right yeah. That's a whole another story. I agree. Um, I know something funny. I guess this is like one of my little last little topics I wanted to talk about. Okay. Like, I just saw Todd Perry talking about how he used the Medea voice during intimacy. 
Why would you tell a reporter that? <laughs> because no, I was getting those vibes. Because you know, in all his "Why Did We Get Married" scenes, where he was having like like trying to be all sexy for Diane and the "Why Did We Get Married" scenes, I was like, I don't want Medea coming at me like this. Oh, and for him to openly no. admit that he used the Medea voice during sex, like, first of all, who who want to be hearing that? Why would you do that to someone? <laughs> And what are you saying in the Medea voice? I have so many questions. <laughs> Wait a minute. I need some time to process. And this isn't alleged. He said this. <laughs> that he does. No, Because he was on Tyler. a polygraph. A polygraph test. Tyler, no. Oh my god. Ugh. First of all, it's I guess he may wait there's there's a lot of random thoughts popping in my head that I'm I'm trying to organize um depending on who the person is they may they may like it which sounds weird I would hope so if they Um, if they're going through that but I'm saying like you know if they're with Tyler, then maybe they expect to have some of those moments. It's just that's a weird, that's a weird scenario for that to 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 take place. Like maybe at the dinner table, but you know, that reminds me of something like you said about the homecoming, Medea homecoming thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. When you were like, she said, like you never see Medea's legs, and that is so true. Yeah. You never see her legs. You don't. And you, you never hear Todd Perry talking in the Medea dirty voice. Wait. First I'm, time for everything. I'm still, I'm still, I'm, a part of me is, a part of me is trying to still process that, and a part of me is trying to react. Like, I just wish, I almost wish I could unhear that. I'm so, I had to hear it. <laughs> Y'all do too, so. Tyler, why? Because I try to step like sometimes, like tonight at the Oscars, like he looked very handsome, like you know, suit, da da da, glasses. He looked very nice as a man. It's almost it's already hard to separate him because he does that so well. And then for him to say that, it's just like no, no, we want. I want it better. He loves Medea. He loves. I don't care what he says. As much as he said he gonna quit and he not gonna do me. He loves being Medea, and that shows you that right there. Um, not wrong with him loving. It's not wrong with him loving Medea, but I'm just it's saying. A time he, and a place, to, sir. he be trying to act like he trying to deny it or something. Like he don't love her. You love Medea. You love that. Um, mm. I just thought that was so odd. And for me, I can never separate him because even when he's talking in his regular voice, I hear the Medea coming out sometimes. But and I he hear got a touch the lips. Medea. He has womanly right. lips. And then he's sitting there giving Will Smith a, a pep doc in the back while he having his breakdown. Let's look about you, sir. And you're, what you got going on? Man. I just, I'm trying to I'm not trying to picture it, but I'm just trying to picture like I can't picture the that. verbiage. The right, verbiage. Like, what are you saying? Like, but why would you that? tell anybody that? Why would you tell anybody that? I don't understand. Send, can you send me that video or wherever you? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I can't react to that. I'm, I'm, I can't. I guess I did. I guess that was my reaction, but it's just like. Um. Wow, it's just you know. It's I think disgusting. I just, yeah, it's, it's it's weird. That's that's weird. But yeah, that was all the topics I had that I wanted to talk about this episode. Do you have anything else you want to like talk about? Or? Um, I had a little something for get it off your chest. Um, what's annoying me with the I. Okay. So the girls, and it's usually girls that I see make these type of videos. So that's why I'm saying that. But girls are guys, I guess. Um, if you're trying to make like a informative TikTok or mm-hmm. real or whatever, and y'all are putting that writing up there, 
mm-hmm. and it's popping like that and it's right. like two or three sentences please stop make two videos or make whatever you got to say a bullet point because can't nobody read that that fast like they'll be like yeah i have to pause it mm-hmm. yeah me too. and watch it like three times but it's annoying stop doing that like <laughs> that's that's what i hate when people be like the algorithm says make this video seven seconds or less da, 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 da. Con- not all content is meant to be consumed that way like, right I and hate- then like and then they're trying to give like very valuable and value valuable information like how to stop being depressed mm-hmm. 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 Like- and it's like two sentences like <laughs> bam oh they just annoy me when i see that like just just y'all please stop doing it just stop um something else that annoys me mm-hmm. like i saw this tiktok and this girl was like she hates saying good morning and i was like yes i found my people i hate saying good morning i really do because she was like that's just so this is, it just sounds ugly good morning I'm like no <laughs> i don't want to say good morning like i just started my day and i gotta say good morning to everybody like i hate saying good morning i really do does it matter like the setting that you're in like if you're just home no. or like if, if you... i'm home especially i hate saying when i'm home and i just woke up and i gotta say good morning to somebody especially right now where i'm at <laughs> like i gotta say good morning are you kidding me? okay so what about like if you were going to like um a meeting or an office or something like in the morning i mean it's not like i'm not going to say good morning I just but do you it. still not like it there as well i don't i don't like saying good morning like so what would you say prefer? hey hey oh okay <laughs> yeah or how are you hi hmm. like i don't feel like i have to say good morning like or like i'm an elevator and i gotta say good morning like oh good morning it's the morning. i hate being I on an elevator with other people like that I, that's my like awkward black girl like triggering moment like in the elevator with other people like i, I don't feel it. awkward on the elevator i, I just i don't i, I mean see. i don't feel like because i feel like i don't have to talk to anybody if i'm on the elevator i don't know if people feel like they have to speak to the other person that they're on the elevator with, but no i put my headphones in i'm in my phone like this is my me time this is like it's like being on a bus or something when you're like on it like <laughs> like being on the bus before you go somewhere or being in your car before you go somewhere like this is my time to depress i don't want to be i don't want to tell you good morning i don't want to talk to you i don't know you i don't have to because i feel like you know when that, where i am now like the people that i know it's like a pressure to talk and a pressure to say this and i'm not and if i have to live with that pressure on a daily basis you think i'm gonna let random strangers put that pressure on me and yeah. no i'm not talking um, to you and you know a lot of times when i walk miko like i put headphones on just to avoid like right. talking to people and some because... people don't care about that either they be like <laughs> I'm a... yeah back in there like people that do that are like low-key <laughs> like some i feel like they're they need to be categorized yeah they need to be categorized as something because that's not <laughs> yeah no. i'm putting it back in my ear like are you kidding me that's ridiculous yeah i, I don't like when people do that because i know you see and sometimes i wear the big ones so like like because sometimes when i have the hair cover in my ear like the mm-hmm. buds don't work so i put the big ones on and like I get made up so bad for wearing big headphones when I was a kid. I don't know why, but like huh? in 2013, I would get in, made fun of and like like people would pick at me for having big headphones. For like for thing like in 2013 for middle schoolers, earbuds was the thing. If you didn't have earbuds and you had the little big like headphones oh. you put on with the computer when you was in elementary school, you get made fun of for that. And I have kids those, are so stupid then, sometimes. But I had headphones, but you're I have the big ones, but you have no headphones. Okay, period. And you're you're asking me to borrow my big headphones. They were, that's how they would sli- no. slide in to ask me for them. Because like people, okay, first they laugh, then they copy. Okay, yeah. so you, people <laughs> pick on you for like one of the following reasons. It could be jealousy because they don't have it because they want yeah. it. Um, maybe some other ones in there too, but I find, ooh, like, 
most of the times it's because they want it and they don't have it um i think that people pick pick on you like if you haven't done anything um sometimes like you're just in a roasting session and that's different but i feel like if people just want to find some like <laughs> like sometimes in school um like when it's winter time like i will always get like a a coat like an official coat like long coat and most of the students would have like just like jackets puff jackets like that type of thing right so because their jackets were all the same someone comes and they're different Mm -hmm. then they find they they just i guess their way of coping with that is to pick on it because it's different not realizing that you know this is a nice coat like Right, you, know, you shouldn't, right. you know, and, and then, then we be, and our our parents would work so hard and buy us and stuff, and we'd be embarrassed to wear it because everyone else is wearing something that's lighter or something that's like supposed to be cool, but they'd be cold, and they weren't wearing it because it was cool. They was wearing it because that's probably all their parents could afford. And we were lucky enough to have parents that could afford us the big puffy coat when they just had the little like light jacket because that's mm-hmm. all they could really afford mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. it's not and i'm not even shaming them for having right. that it's just like it's just how you know, we, should, cope. we should be more right we should be more thankful for what we have you know instead of being instead of being embarrassed by it yeah um, that's true because like i i love triple mix now like it's like a signature for me but when i was a kid i would cry if my mom put me in a turtle neck. i would cry okay but mm-hmm. I, I was probably bombing the turtleneck when I was a kid. Like, I'm like, why did I not like this when I was a kid? And me, I was, like, really, really short. And, like, I would always, like, my mom would always want to wear, put me in um bell, bell-bottom pants. I'm like, why you always, <laughs> why you always want to wear bell-bottom pants? Like, she's like, oh, this would be cute. This because I'm like, no, no. Mm-hmm. But look at me now. I got two pairs of bell-bottom pants in my, in my closet. I still don't wear them now because I'm still short. And they still look weird on me. But I think they're cute now. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, I hated them. I don't know. That's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. You know, with the headphones thing, it was just because I think not only was I getting made fun of because the headphones were big, but it's because they were cheetah print on the outside and pink on the inside. Like, they were super, super girly. But then it was just like... That sounds fly. I mean, it was very gaudy, like, and, like, ghetto fabulous, like, very loud <laughs> and extra, like, but they were my pink headphones, and then it was just funny seeing, like, the same dude that was make, me making fun of them, an hour later, I see them in the morning on the computer going, typing and stuff with the big pink headphones, it was like, okay, this is interesting, mm-hmm. but yeah. But my thing is, don't make fun of something when you know, you know, you just you just, you want to have you want to have it too. But that's so mm-hmm. you won't want to do it, so they can get it. Like I hate people right. like that. And that reminds me of this time. I always talk about this. I talk about this a lot on Twitter. I may have told you about this before. So when I went through my little blonde phase or whatever, like well, I have that periodically. Um, one time I was I won't say where I was just surrounded with people, and this girl was like first of all the other girl did it trying to be messy anyway but the other it was it was a couple people there but one girl gonna ask the other girl she was like oh well why don't you try blonde or whatever like that because my hair was blonde and then the girl gonna say oh i don't like blonde hair but blonde hair make your hair ashy or something like that your hair dry or something like that and then no makes your hair ashy period (laughs) period that's on period (laughs) and um and don't you know two weeks later the girl came back and she had like blonde highlights or whatever and then after that she went full blonde when i had put my hair like back a different color i'm like girl if you wanted your hair blonde you could have just said that you could have given me my props like sis you killing it you know whatever you had to throw a little shade or whatever like stuff like that kills me and the the girl still blonde back blonde to this day i'm like it was that all like i hate i hate catty girls and i hate messy girls like oh oh like that's just like the worst because everything is so extra i've never had an experience like that like i think because i don't know it's rare that people would like well i guess if people do say something bad about me i probably would never hear it but Mm -hmm. people would never never got so comfortable where they feel like they can like say that to me like right like next to me but i guess because i'm very like 
I don't be around a lot of people either. Like, I'm never, like, around, like, a ton of women. I choose, not, I know those people weren't your friends, but it's, like, I choose people, like, I even be around, my, like, very, very wisely. And, like, I guess that's that's a, a good thing that I've never had to deal with people not, not I'm it's a good thing I didn't have to deal with that kind of stuff but I never really had that experience because like most of the time anytime I've ha- had any kind of beef with another woman is because of a man mm-hmm. it's the only time I've had beef with a woman because of another a man or something that their man did and stuff like that um but as far as like my relationships at work and my my friendships like especially in school like, I was always pretty like popular when I was like in elementary school mm-hmm. I was really really popular um because I was just like really really nice and I would pretty much do anything for anyone which isn't good either but I was but I also was just very kind to everybody mm-hmm. which you didn't see that a lot in elementary school because <laughs> everyone was like me mm-hmm. so I guess that's another reason why people like me so much um and even in high school I wasn't popular in high school but I did like people were everyone was pretty much cool with me and but the only time I started having beef with other people was when I got older and started dating and stuff like that and that's when I started having trouble when they come these dudes yeah yeah I think like maybe once or twice it's been guy related and it doesn't happen a lot uh just period um it's just I I feel like um I feel like it's something about me that people want to try you know and they want to to see if they can like you know ruffle feathers but thank god i'm i'm a pretty consent like calm person like a lot of stuff doesn't get under my skin like i'll i'll hear it and i'll see it but i won't acknowledge it like i'm beyonce to these okay because um and and then later you know if I feel the need, you know, if it needs to be addressed, then it's going to be addressed. But for the most part, I peep what I peep who says what, you know, Mm -hmm. and even sometimes I see like messiness, I detect messiness. And it's just with other people. Like, sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's just the person's own, like, you know, whatever they got going on. But you know, um, you gotta be neutral. You gotta stay neutral. So that's how you get out of tea. I'm telling you. (laughs) People, oh. that's how people that's not how you get the tea you gotta be neutral you gotta be calm and act like you don't care that's how people like let me talk to her about my drama and you, and you know what tea. a lot of people yeah and then sometimes i turn the tea away because sometimes people come to you and they want to tell you something just so they can get you in the loop and then when something go down mm-hmm. then they will say oh well i told so and so like a lot of times sometimes people come to me with their business i'm like you know what i i, I don't need to hear it that's okay that's okay but and that happens because a lot of time like work gossip like work gossip is ugh, like yeah. like scandalous okay yeah. and um like a lot of times like i just recall people be like oh well you know what happened in so and so and so and i'm like no i don't need to know that's all right right like you know because like i just try to i stay out of drama like i feel like i had an experience in high school where uh like i got caught up in like drama and messiness mm-hmm. and since that moment i'm like that's not me that's not my thing y'all can leave that for something else i'm gonna focus on what i came here to do I don't need to know nothing if it don't pertain to my work or right. whatever or whatever because right. all that is not it's not for me right. and people be like oh well because uh, I remember one time like <laughs> like there was like you know when the expression like the tea came about or whatever mm-hmm. I'm like girl I ain't got no tea all I got is water you know it's not it ain't nothing juicy over right. here you know right <laughs> But, you know, that, that just don't do nothing for me. Like, I don't get any type of satisfaction from hearing. Right. Like, especially if it's not, especially if it's not, it don't got nothing to do with me. I'm not, yeah. I'm not related to these people in any way. Like, it's just some random person. Oh, you heard so-and-so-and-so? I don't care. Yeah. What else is, you know. But, yeah, it just kills me how, um, you know, when you said that about the, uh, uh, dang! When you said about the headphones, that just replayed all that. Like mm-hmm. whoop, it, you know. But yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, that was pretty much it for what I wanted to say. Um, 
I saw uh Ti did a song with uh I can't say it. son Demani. yeah yeah so I'm gonna uh check that out because I'm he's kinda... really good rapper and he gives J Cole vibes mm, I can see that from just and I he didn't like curse it all in his whole song he didn't curse or anything like not saying there's nothing wrong with person I'm just like that's you know I like that, that shows though. like your vocabulary how expanded his vocabulary is and it's only and, right he coming from Ti you know right. Like yeah. that's what Tia needs. That's what Tia needs to stick to. Stick to doing songs with your sons and crap. Don't stop checking hymens and and <laughs> doing all this other crazy stuff you be doing. Just stick to that. Stop talking about people's virginity and all that other crap. Just keep doing little songs and stuff with Demond. Keep doing that. That's what you're good at. That's all I want to hear from you. I wonder how. Well, I know, but see how we talked about like not addressing stuff and and talking about stuff all the time like and then we talked about Beyonce and then that made me think about how she's been 20 years and in the game and has minimal like well for her herself hasn't been attached to any like drama or scandal that type of thing Mm -hmm. um and I feel like that's how she does it like she don't Mm -hmm. put herself out there for stuff to get to her like yeah and i feel like she had to like learn a part of that she had to learn to be there because when you look at some of her old interviews like she would kind of like talk about her life a little bit more and she would address a lot of stuff a lot more and i can tell like now it's not the fact that she just doesn't want to she's just tired of it like she just doesn't have the energy to sit there and like and it's like you can tell like in the her older interviews i feel like you know she was talking about a situation that was maybe like draining to her or something that was a big drama where it'd be with Destiny child or something or how people may perceive her in the group as being like the most mm-hmm. popular she was just like almost exhausted talking about it and talking going to all the interviews and asking the same questions over and over again so i can see why she doesn't like really do interviews anymore mm-hmm. and she kind of when she does speak it's more about positive stuff in her music and the stuff that kind of matters to her and what's that she wants to talk about and she controls her narrative and controls what controls what's being talked about so yeah yeah i just um i just i just think more people should do that because then mm-hmm. it'll like I'm not saying that people like uh the shade room and stuff are not entertaining it's just sometimes it's too much like sometimes it's five posts a day about the same people and yeah. i'm like bro i only know certain people from just looking at blogs like this yeah like how we a while back talked about little dirt coming i don't know nothing about him except for shade room i never mm-hmm. heard his music well barely I, I don't think i've ever heard his music the girl like ari i don't even know who she is i just know her name from seeing mm-hmm. on the shade room the jada girl like the all those all those people i only know them from blogs um Mm -hmm. that's their role i mean you got your beyonce's and you got your those girls you know Mm -hmm. everyone has to play their part in their role i mean you got people that's i mean i mean what would the world be without any mess i mean that's who people live for people like the mess sometimes i mean it it gives us something it gives us something to talk about very true you got people that that sit back and watch and you got people that are like in you it. know like yeah they're in it like it reminds me of like hustlers like um jello's character in the movie hustler she made a, a oh. like a quote she was just saying like i want to see the that whole, she was just like saying like the whole world is a strip club like you got people throwing the money you got people and you got people doing the dance you know you never seen yeah. the movie it's a mm-hmm. good movie. It's one of my favorite movies. It's on Hulu. J Lo always makes really good movies. So, and I, I just wouldn't go into the theater. I think to see it, but it probably was one of those ones where they were like, you know, There's on H- in it. HBO Max. You know, like I hate they stopped doing that because that was a vibe. Yeah, was I was really like, good. why they ain't put Jurassic Park on HBO? Because oh my god, you and Jurassic Park. <laughs> that can be your first acting movie. <laughs> Jurassic Park movie. That'd be dope. Unfortunately, this is the last one they said. What? That's crazy. That's shocking. Because they brought the old people back from the first one. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on that. We can go out on that. 
<laughs> that's hilarious all right you guys this was episode 10 i hope you enjoyed it be sure to like subscribe push the bell for notifications i don't even know if we got a bell um follow us on social media all that great jazz and we'll see you episode 11